the demo class of Hadoop. This will be an introduction class of Hadoop. Let me share my screen. Uh, I think you can see the screen. Can someone please confirm me? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kapil. Thank you, Babu. So this uh, class is uh, today's class is an introduction class for Hadoop, or you can say it's an overview of uh, Hadoop. So after this class, you will be having basic uh, idea what Hadoop is all about. So we I would like to start with agenda. So the agenda for uh, today's class is what is Hadoop? Why do we need that? How Hadoop works? Then HDFS architecture. What is MapReduce? Then Hadoop cluster. Hadoop uh, processes. Topology of a Hadoop cluster, distinction of Hadoop framework means how a Hadoop framework is different from other framework and last but not the least is prerequisite to learn Hadoop. So what are the software and hardware requirement if we want to go with this Hadoop training. So this is the agenda for today. We will start with the first one that is what is Hadoop. So I would like to make this as interactive session. Anytime you are having any doubt, you can ask me and I will uh, clear your doubt. So we'll start with the first one. That is what is Hadoop. So it is an open source framework. Open source means that is uh, free of cost available. You can go to internet and you can download that. This has been downloaded, sorry, developed by Apache team. So if you want to use Hadoop, we can go to Apache website and we can download it and we can use it for our own purpose or for our enterprise purpose. The next thing we have is it is used for distributed processing of large data set. So before we go much deeper in the technical part, let me give you some layman example that will clarify the concept of Hadoop. So the example is like uh, there is a school and in that school there is a principal there are 10 teachers as well. Now there is a task. Task is of checking 1000 answer sheet. Just wait, someone is asking some question. Okay, thank you Kapil. I can clarify all the doubts at the end of the class. Yeah, that's good. So I was giving that example. There is a task of checking 1000 answer sheet. Now the principal has two options. Either he himself can start checking the answer sheet enough to do the thing but if a single person will try to do a big task that will be taking a lot of time so instead of doing that what we can do we can distribute the task among 10 teachers because there are 10 teachers in the school instead of checking those thousand teach, uh, answer sheet by principal if the principal can distribute the task among uh, 10 teachers the task can be completed in less amount of time. The same mathematical, simple mathematical concept, the more number of workers, the less time they will take to complete the task. So the same concept applies to Hadoop. Instead of doing a big complex processing on a single machine, we can distribute the processing among multiple machines. So that the task, the processing can be completed in less amount of time. So that was the example which uh, might have given you some brief idea about uh, you can say Hadoop. Anyways, there is one more similarity between the school example and Hadoop. In school, principal was controlling the teachers. Similarly, in our Hadoop, there are multiple machines and out of those multiple machines, one is master machine and remaining all are my slave machines. So, just like the principal was controlling teachers and get the work done, similarly, my master machine will be controlling my slave machines and ultimately getting the work done from my slave machines. So that was the complete uh, discussion about the third line. The next is it works across cluster of computers. As I explained you, cluster of computers means a set of multiple machines which are connected to each other and using a simple programming model that is MapReduce. So MapReduce is a programming thing we can write a MapReduce program which can be executed on multiple machines because you know that we are distributing the processing among multiple machines. It means that 
we need something which can be executed on multiple machine at the same time and that is nothing but my MapReduce only. So MapReduce is my framework which will help me to process the large amount of data on multiple machine. So this was all about what is Hadoop. Let's proceed to the next slide. That is why do we need Hadoop? So before we uh, learn any technology, we must know what's the requirement of using that. So let's find it out. The first and the most important reason behind this is data is growing faster. Why the data is growing faster? The data is growing faster because uh, you are using uh, net banking, you are using uh, online websites to purchasing some products and you uh, are engaged in social networking, Facebook uh, or anything. Let me give you some example. You are opening the Facebook and you are clicking on some website. Depending upon your preference, you may be clicking on gaming website, you may be clicking on some garments website, you may be clicking on some technology website. Whatever you are doing, those things are being captured by your Facebook team for analysis purpose. So just give me a moment. I will show you some sample data. Whatever Facebook is capturing, just give me a moment. I will be opening a sample data which is uh, captured by Facebook team and the data can be uh, analyzed with the help of Hadoop. So let me open that. Okay, I have shared my screen again. You can see this one. This is the name of the user that is Sravan. This is the day on which the user has clicked on some website on Wednesday. The time was uh, 8.28 uh, the p.m. you can say. Uh, this is uh, AM, already written AM. That is a sample data created by me. So you will get some real-time data from Facebook if you want to analyze that one. The country from where the user has uh, uh, logged in is USA and the website on which he clicked in or is dating. So ultimately wherever you are clicking the details are being captured by your Facebook team. You can see the next one as well. The name of the user is Sandeep. On Thursday on this particular time 17 a.m. from USA he clicked on Garments website. The next user is James who uh, clicked on Friday at this particular point of time 9.20 a.m. from USA he clicked on Life Insurance uh, website. So ultimately you are clicking somewhere and the details are being captured by Facebook team to analyze the data. How they can analyze? Suppose they want to find out what percentage of guys are clicking on a life insurance website over the weekend. So the data they are capturing, they, there are millions of users logged in into Facebook at particular point of time. So the details they are capturing is very large in size. You can say that at the end of the day they will be having billions of rows of data. And at the end of one year, they will be having very large amount of data, terabytes or petabytes of data. And that amount of data you cannot analyze on a single machine. So let me tell you, Facebook is extensively using Hadoop for analysis its data and for business intelligence. So whatever will be the result, suppose I want to find out what percentage of guys are clicking on gaming website on uh, week, weekdays from China. Just some query. Whatever will be the result of that query, depending upon that one, I may be launching some gaming website in China or if the response is very poor, I may be, uh, you can say, I may not be launching some websites in China. So the data, the history data, that may be Facebook history data, that may be your Walmart, your Big Bazaar history data, anything. The data can be analyzed with the help of Hadoop only because the data size is too large to handle on a single machine. So, that was all about the sample data. It is not the real-time data that I have created just for your understanding. Anyways, let me again share the screen. Okay friends, I have shared the screen uh, again. So I was talking about that uh, sample data which we actually using uh, in the analysis in Hadoop. So 
that was the reason why do we need hadoop because the data size is quite large that is growing faster we are engaged into social networking need to process multiple petabytes of data in the old days when we had data in nb or gb we were able to process the data even uh, on a single machine but nowadays the data size is terabytes or petabytes and we are not able to handle the data on a single machine that's why we need hadoop the next reason is the performance of traditional application is decreasing because traditionally you are doing everything on a single machine like mysql oracle you will keep on loading the data you can say you will keep on uh, increasing the load there will be the decrease in performance if you are uh, dealing with 200 gb of data on a single machine that might be giving you good performance after some days when your business has grown up and your data size has increased from 200 gb to 5 terabytes in that case if you will still use the same system same machine definitely there will be decrease in performance so that is the reason we need hadoop because as compared to hadoop, if you are increasing the load in hadoop that will not decrease the performance why because the number of machine in a hadoop cluster is not constant i gave you an example that we were we are using 10 machine in hadoop cluster so if your data size is increasing year by year you are not bound to use 10 machines you can use 20 machines you can use 50 machines so as per my requirement when my business is growing up i can uh, you can say increase the number of machines in the cluster as well and after uh, that the next reason is failure is expected rather than exceptional while working on hardware or software you know that there is no guarantee the system may fail at any time so if you are doing the required processing on a single machine and if that processing will be failed in that scenario you will have to uh, you can say start the processing again that will be taking a lot of time instead of that as compared to hadoop if one or two machines are not working it does not mean that my processing will be failed the processing can be still taken care by many available machine i will again compare with a school example that if two teachers are not feeling well it does not mean that the checking of thousand answers it will not be completed the task will be still completed with the help of the many available aged teachers the only thing is as the teachers are less as compared to previous one they might take a little more time but my processing will be completed then so this is the beauty of hadoop that in case you are working with multiple machines some of the machines are down even in that case you are able to complete your process so these are some of the points why do we need hadoop what are the reasons we are uh, you can say we are running uh, after hadoop so that was all about this slide let's proceed now the next we have is how hadoop works so hadoop consists of two things one is your processing i was talking about the processing that the processing was very complex and that could not be completed over a single machine and that's why we did it on uh, you can say multiple machine similarly the same problem may arise for uh, storage as well so you can say that there is a big file that cannot be stored on a single machine so what should we do now just like we distributed the processing among multiple machines similarly we can also distribute the storage among multiple machines so you can say that there is a big file we will split that file into multiple parts and we will store the those parts on multiple machine so the first part which is dealing with the storage part of your hadoop is known as hadoop distributed file system in short you can uh, simply use the term hdfs that stands for hadoop distributed file system and the second part of hadoop is processing uh, technically it is known as mapreduce so in the coming slide we'll talk more about storage and mapreduce separately so let's uh, proceed to the next slide and we will be talking more about hdfs okay next is hdfs architecture so i was uh, using the term master machine slave machines all those things let's talk about the real hadoop terminology about the same so this node you can see this machine uh, this machine is a name node that is my master machine itself name node is the name technical hadoop term you can see so this is my master machine actually i do have a backup node just like in school we have vice principal to take care of the activity in case the principal is absent similarly in case my master machine will be down 
there must be someone who can take care of the activity so that is nothing but my backup node remaining all are my slave machine those are known as data node data node 1 2 3 4 5 so you can say that i am having a hadoop cluster of seven machines which contain one master machine one slave machine and remaining no sorry one master machine one backup master machine and remaining five slave machines one more thing you can notice over here is this row indicates that this name node is controlling every data node because that is master machine that is giving instruction to every uh, data node to do the required thing to hold the data so that was about the master slave architecture of uh, Hadoop. Now let's talk about these different uh, blocks. You can see these multiple colorful blocks. These colorful blocks are nothing but your file only. Just assume that this was a big file previously. This one. Now the file was too big to store on a single machine. So for storing that file what we have done Hadoop internally has separated that big file into smaller parts. You can see this one. The file has been separated into 3 by 5 that is 15, 15 smaller parts and these smaller parts are known as block in Hadoop terminology. So you can see that the big file which was too big to store on a single machine, I have separated that into 15 smaller blocks and now it's possible to store those 15 blocks on multiple machines. You can see this one, 3 blocks have been stored on first data node, the next 3 blocks have been stored on the second one, third one like this. One. So ultimately every machine is participating in storage just like every machine was participating in processing of your data similarly now the data has been stored on multiple machines so that was all about the storage of Hadoop one more thing you can notice on this slide that is this orange block you can see this orange block that is available on the first data node it's available on the second one it's also available on the third one as well so ultimately the data is duplicated over multiple machines. So you can say that as I was telling you in case one or two machines are down you are still capable of executing your processing. How is that possible? That is possible because the data is duplicated. If suppose this machine first and the second will be down I can still access my orange block from the third one. So this is also a new feature in Hadoop. You can replicate your data and that is configurable how many copy of your data you want that is configurable you can see this one the orange block is replicated three times by default the replication factor this is known as the replication factor how many copy you need in your Hadoop that is known as the replication factor and by default the replication factor in Hadoop is three but that is by default we can change that if required we can make it one we can make it ten as well as per our requirement so friends that was uh, all about the storage part HDFS Let's have a look at MapReduce as well. So the next part of Hadoop is MapReduce. That is your processing part. You can say MapReduce plays a key role in Hadoop framework. Why it's playing a key role? Because when dealing with the, uh, let me show you that file again. This one. Uh, Kapil, can you see the file? I'm not sure which uh, screen is uh, shared. Anyone can please tell me, can you see this text file? Okay, it's, it means previously also you could not see that one. Anyways, let me uh, share this one. Um, yeah, I think now you can see. Babu, please confirm. Yeah, thank you. So this is uh, the actual data which I want to analyze. Previously I explained this one. Anyways, let me explain it again. So this is the username, Shravan, on Wednesday. At this point of time, this is by mistake AM, that's PM only. And from USA, clicked on dating website. Similarly, we may have other users like, uh, let's talk about some other users, James. The username is James. On Friday, he, on this point of time, he logged in from USA into Facebook and he clicked on life insurance website. So ultimately, the user is clicking on some website and that is being captured uh, by Facebook to analyze the data. So I was talking about MapReduce. So MapReduce is all about analysis of data. It plays a key role. Why? Because it is uh, 
required because loading of data is a simple thing you can store your data anywhere you might be interested uh, to store the data only on single machine you may attach some extra hard disk but as far as processing is concerned you cannot process terabytes or petabytes of data on a single machine that's why we need MapReduce. so let's come back uh, to the ppt itself i'm coming back to the ppt Okay, so the next is it's a programming model for writing the MapReduce program or writing the applications that rapidly process large amount of data. You can uh, think that the program is capable of executing on multiple machines. That's why it can process very large amount of data on multiple machines. Okay, let's talk about Mapper and Reducer separately. As of now, we are using MapReduce as a single term. It consists of two things, Mapper and Reducer. So let's uh, try to understand what is mapper and what is the reducer. So mapper is a function. Okay, before uh, talking about the definition, let's uh, talk about some layman example. The principal had assigned the task of checking thousand answer sheets to the month, to ten teachers. It means that one teacher is responsible for checking only hundred answer sheet. It means that one teacher will be preparing the result for only hundred students. Similarly, the second teacher will also be preparing the result for next 100 students. Ultimately, at the end, we will be having 10 different results, not a single result for my school. So the principal will say that, no, I don't need 10 different results. He will give instruction to one teacher that please consolidate the result for me. So the teacher will be collecting the smaller result from each teacher, will be consolidating that into a single unit and finally handing the result over to uh, principal. So similarly, whatever big complex processing was there, that was distributed among multiple machines. So whatever part of the task is assigned to each machine, they are doing their own part. So that part, that processing, whatever individual machine is doing, that is known as map. After that, one machine will be collecting the smaller result that you can say intermediate result from each machine and will be consolidating that into a single unit and this process this consolidation part is known as reducer so that was all about mapper and reducer anyways let's talk about some uh, definition type thing mapper is a function that process input data from my storage Hadoop storage SPFS do some processing over that and finally generate intermediate output data so that was all about mapper reducer will be picking up this intermediate data from all the mappers and finally generate the final output data so this is all about you can say the mapper and reducer if you are having any doubt i will take all your doubts at the end of the class next is let me go to the next slide next is about hadoop cluster in Hadoop cluster, we may have multiple machines, a number of machines. We may have two machines, we may have 10 machines, 20 machines, anything. But as far as the type of machine is concerned, that is the straight. The type of machines are name, node, master machine. There is only one that is the backup of my master. And the straight. Okay, and the third one is data node that is my slave machine. So in a particular Hadoop cluster, we have one name node, one secondary name node, and multiple data nodes. So that was about Hadoop cluster. Let's talk about the next one. The next slide talks about the different services, different processes running on your system. So once you will install Hadoop on your system, I will be providing each and every step for doing that. So that is, uh, you can say, once you have installed Hadoop on your system, there will be some services, some processes running on your system. So that is, let's talk about those processes and their responsibility, what they are doing. The process is name node. Name node is the process which we have already talked about. It is a process which runs on master machine and it is responsible for taking care of your storage part, that is HDFS. Similarly, we have another process, Job Tracker. 
that is actually responsible for taking care of processing part it also runs on master machine only the next is data node that runs on slave machine and it takes care of sdfs part so you can say that name node and data node looks like they are related to each other because they both uh, are taking care of hdfs the only difference is name node is a master process which runs on master machine you can say and data node is a slave process so ultimately name node process is controlling data node process for storage part similarly we have the next process that is task tracker that runs on slave machines similarly job tracker and task tracker also are related to each other because both are taking care of map list part their processing part so job tracker is the master process it is controlling the task tracker that is your slave process so these are some of the processes which are running on your master machine and on your slave machine topology the next we have is the same thing i have just displayed in the form of some graphical you can see this one the, the central machine this is a, my master machine on which name node process and job tracker process is running we do have a secondary name node that can be taken care <coughs> take care of the responsibility in case my main master is down apart from the master machine and the backup master machine i have five slave machines as well and on each and every slave machine data node process and task tracker is running data node task tracker data node task tracker is running on each slave machine so that was all about different processes different services which are running on our machines when we will we will be installing hadoop next we have is distinction how a hadoop framework is different from other frameworks so let's talk about it first is simplicity simplicity means as far as software is concerned that is quite simple we can go to apache website and we can download it we can use a simple hardware as far as hardware is there any simple hardware whatever pc or laptop you are having at your home that can be used uh, for uh, installing hadoop so that is quite simple apart from that one we can simply write some efficient code efficient mapreduce program which are capable of executing on multiple machine hence they are capable of handling very large amount of data that was not possible without hadoop so that was all about the simplicity of hadoop next feature we have distinct feature we have is reliable as hadoop is running on commodity hardware commodity hardware means very simple machine that may be your pc or laptop at your home as we are running on that one we are not using any special hardware it may be possible that sometime our machine will go down but as i told you hadoop will automatically take care of such type of thing whenever one or two machines are down your hadoop will be taking care of that one it will be scheduling the job on remaining available machine suppose in the beginning all the 10 machines were available your hadoop distributed the task among 10 machines now before the completion of task two of your machine went down due to power failure hardware issue software bug anything after that your master machine will automatically detect that those two machines are not responding it means that whatever part of the job i have scheduled on those two machines i need to schedule it again on any other available machine so ultimately these things are properly taken care internally by hadoop as a user you never need to look into how many machines are available or how many machines are not available so simply need to submit your processing job to hadoop master machine after that scheduling it on the play machine taking care of which machines are live which machines are dead executing your mapper part consolidating your result with the help of user part all the all these so tasks are the responsibility of your master machine and at the end of your processing you will get the useful statistics which can be used by your client uh, for doing the business intelligence so that was all about the reliability the next feature we have is scalability as i explained you earlier as well that the number of machine in a hadoop cluster are not constant that can be increased or decreased as per the requirement if you think that your job is still taking time and you are using 10 machines and the resources are still taking too much time it simply means that you need to set up a cluster of more machines you can add some more machines you can 
add some 10 more machines to your cluster so your cluster will be having now 20 machines similarly the vice versa case in case you are telling that i am just doing some uh, learning purpose and uh, 10 machines are not required for me please remove some of the machines so that is also possible so you can increase or decrease the number of machines uh, from your Hadoop cluster at any point of time while your Hadoop is running in that discussion. So that was all about distinction and with this slide we are uh, done with the technical uh, part. You can say that was all about the introduction to Hadoop or you can say a brief overview about Hadoop. So we are still left with one slide, the last one that is prerequisite. So if we want to go for this one month Hadoop training what are the requirement, what are the software and hardware requirement. So the first surprising thing for you is you may be joining this demo class from Windows but let me tell you Hadoop does not support Windows. So Hadoop can be only installed on Linux based operating system that may be Mac OS, that may be Red Hat or Ubuntu. And why I have highlighted Ubuntu? Because in any case you don't have Mac OS or Red Hat, Ubuntu you can install in on your system even you can uh, install in virtual virtual box as well it's your choice if you want to install ubuntu as a dual boot or you want to install ubuntu as a virtual machine so i will provide you the steps for both of the thing whatever is your preference you can do that the next requirement is java 1.6 or higher version is required yeah that is uh, required because hadoop is all about java it is written in java java is required for installing and running hadoop so that is not a big deal that is also a open source you can download it from Oracle website and you can simply install your Java on your system next requirement is disk space and RAM disk space is required for holding your you can say taking care of your storage part and RAM is required for your processing part but that is not a big deal because if someone is having PC or laptop definitely he will be having some storage and RAM so that is not a big deal the next requirement is a cluster of computers is required. As per this diagram, you may be thinking that I need one master, one backup master and five slave. So ultimately, I need seven machines. No, that's not required. For learning purpose, you can even install Hadoop on single machine as well. So you can say that your own machine will be working as a master machine as well as your own machine will be working as a slave machine. So all the master process that is a name node and job tracker will be running on your system as well as all the slave processes that is data node and task tracker will be running on your own machine. So that was all about the prerequisite which we need for going for this sort of training and that's all about from my side.